all right hey there welcome back to another video now this one is going to be pretty informal um i just really want to have a little chat with you all and it's, it's gonna be vlog ish style okay all right so what i want to do is talk to you all about the um a little bit about the home purchasing process now this is not how i manifested it how i manifested the house um at all mm -mm. it's going to be on another video where i'm more focused and um it's going to be more thorough than this one um but in in this particular video i really just want to talk to you just do i just want to have a chat okay that's really all i want to do is have a chat about home ownership okay coming from the perspective of a home owner and not so much the realtor even though y'all know i've been a real estate agent for 13 years so i know that the real estate like the agent in me will come out throughout this video i, I understand um so first of all this is not my first rodeo um baby and i purchased the home we actually built a home back in 2006. let me open up my bottom shutters let's see if that helps with the light oh, no, not a lot. <laughs> uh it's very gloomy outside and i don't have my um ring light i don't know what the stand is so anyway so we had a home built back in 2006 and um we were in our 20s back then and, and we're no longer in our 20s um but we have learned a lot and back in 2006 i wasn't a realtor yet until the following year okay so first of all my first tip would be to make sure that you actually have money saved up um yes there are 100 percent financing programs out there yes there are down payment assistance programs out there but don't assume that you're going to qualify for them don't assume that they're always going to be around because right now because rona is outside um they are few and far between they still exist but a lot of the um programs are non-existent right now because of lack of funding and things like that so make sure that you not own, people love to focus on the credit let me make sure that my credit is good right yes that is very important your dti okay the real estate agent is coming out the, your dti is also very important which is your debt to income ratio okay so you can have pretty decent credit but a shit ton of debt and you're gonna have a problem getting qualified. And if you do, or getting approved, and if you do get approved, then your interest rate is not going to be as low as it could be because your DTI is too high, but we're not talking about that. So in addition to you know the credit and all of that, you still need to make sure that you are um that you have money saved up, all right. The the financial institution is going to want to know where are your closing costs coming from where are where is your down payment coming from like how are you able to purchase this house right they're gonna want to see money in the bank okay so um okay again let's say you do qualify for a down payment assistance whoop do wop okay let's say that's the thing you still need what I call pre-closing costs, like the earnest money, which is essentially the down payment for the house. And it could go, you know, it, usually it's around 1%. Um, sometimes it's a little less, sometimes it's a hell of a lot more. It just really depends on what the seller is asking for. But rule of thumb is gonna be somewhere around 1% most of the time. So if you are looking for a $200,000 home, you're going to need to put down $2,000. Uh, 
you also was you also have what's called option an option fee uh, which is a fee that you would pay just in case you get cold feet and change your mind within the first 10 or 11 days um, you can walk away with zero penalty that's called an option fee okay you're also going to have to pay for an inspector because it would be hella foolish to purchase or invest in a two, three plus hundred thousand dollar home and you don't get it inspected by a professional, okay? You need an inspector, okay, the real estate agent, I'll again. You need an inspector to make sure that the house is in um, solid condition because the last thing that you want <clears throat> is to get into a home only to discover that it has all kinds of issues, okay? So you're going to have to pay for an inspector and those fees, uh, range based on the square footage of the home but let's say just put aside $500 I think you would be pretty safe to put aside at least $500 for the inspector you're also gonna have to pay for surveys um, uh, appraisal fees um, what else and this is per house so let's say for example you find a home and you think it's it and you put down your earnest money and your option money and you have an inspector and then the inspector is like, uh-uh, this ain't it. Then you're going to have to go back to the drawing board, okay? You're not going to get that money back from that inspector just because you chose to walk away from this deal, all right? So then you find another house, you're going to have to pay an inspector once again. So again, you're going to need all of these monies in place, all right? Um, next, you're going to need money to decorate the house because there's nothing worse than having a big, beautiful, brand new home and you're sitting, sleeping on air mattresses and sleep and sitting on lawn furniture <laughs> because you were not wise enough to save up the money for the furniture, okay? You don't want to have to go into debt getting furniture. That is like the silliest thing, okay, that you could possibly do. If you, okay, so there are people out in these streets that, uh, and there are real estate agents that are actually encouraging said behavior. Uh, you don't really have, their clients don't really have a lot of money saved up in the bank. Um, they have a credit score that'll get them the house and whatnot, but you know, they help them to get approved for financing or 100% financing or down payment assistance and whoop-de-wop. And then the individual is pretty much still broke once they get into the house um, and they don't have money to furnish the house. They don't even really have money to pay up their first six months worth of mortgage payments. Like it, that's just a silly spot to be in, okay? You don't want to get into a home, <coughs> excuse me, and then have to finance furniture. Furniture is a very, um, it's an item that depreciates very quickly, all right? So you want to have money saved up, not only for your pre-closing costs, as well as your closing costs, okay? We didn't even touch on that. But you also want to have money saved up for furniture. Now, this is going to sound real crazy, but this is a, a figure that I just recently came up with. Take about 10% of your home. So if you purchase the home, again, we're going to use $200,000. 10% of that is $20,000. That's about what it's going to take, depending on the square footage of your home. Uh, in that price range, your, your square footage is probably going to be anywhere from, or let me say up to about twenty two twenty three hundred square feet, right? 20 grand is pretty much what it's gonna. I mean, you really add up all the little trinkets, like you know, this stuff, like this plant. I think that was probably around 20 bucks, and you need a lot of this stuff to decorate, not, not mentioning you know, the actual furniture. It's going to add up, okay? So, you're gonna need at least 10 percent uh, of the cost of the home to furnish the house. Don't be in a rush. Okay, do not be in a rush. Don't think that you're going to get into this house and have it fully pimped out um, within 30 days. It's unrealistic. Now, if you have an abundance of money, access to an abundance of money, you wouldn't be watching this video. 
so um be aware of that and and don't again do not start putting stuff on credit cards um don't dig that hole for yourself all right the mortgage is one thing um and you want to keep it at that you don't want to have to be paying all these additional credit cards um and furniture payments and all of this because you weren't wise enough to save up this money up front okay do not rush the decor decoration process it's going to take time it'll probably be two maybe even three years to get this house exactly how we want it to look and that is okay we're not trying to impress a soul okay um and yes we do have the money we absolutely do have the money to go out and order everything that we need today we're not doing that that's just stupid okay so moving on other monies you're going to need to have saved up is money is your home fund okay you got um uh lawn maintenance now okay um you're gonna have to have money in the bank for <laughs> you know issues that would that will arise like plumbing issues and i'm laughing because we've already experienced that i'm not even gonna go into it um you know something that can go awry with the, the plumbing or with the um what's that thing called the electrical or like legit anything could happen and you're going to need money for that you cannot pick up a phone and call a landlord and say yo uh, the valve just broke and it's water all over the kitchen floor real life story um there's no one to call but a plumber and you're gonna have to pay for them just to legit come to your house <laughs> okay so you're gonna need a fund for that as well all right a lot of people like to say oh it's cheaper to get you know if you can pay rent you can pay a mortgage yeah that's true but um beyond that you know all of the the maintenance costs you know repairing the roof when it's time um re-leveling the foundation when it settles and starts to crack your house in half um termites pest control like all of that becomes a thing when you become a homeowner so again just because you can afford fifteen hundred two thousand dollars a month for rent does not mean that you can afford to get into a house all right so you need to be you need to have a real a realtor on your team a financial advisor on your team that's going to be able to break all of this down for you so that you're not getting in over your head all right um speaking of that the homegirl academy i've been talking about the homegirl academy for a minute um well over a year uh and i'm going to be launching that on patreon september i believe i forget but it's like the middle of september it's going to be a six month program okay a six month program where i'm going to be teaching you all of these things okay so not only am i going i'm really going to be speaking to you all from the perspective of a realtor uh, a real estate professional which i am and have been for 13 years um but i want to take um people from where they are okay maybe you're not nowhere near being approved already um i'm going to analyze your credit tell you what you need to do help you set a budget in place so that you are able to save up money and i'm going to teach you everything that you need to know before you even embark on the the home buying process so i'm really excited about that so make sure you stay tuned for details to drop on that here really really soon all right so moving on um the next thing that i would say is to purchase and my husband well he's not my husband yet technically but same difference he would be really ecstatic that i'm including this in the video okay because i fought low-key i fought this kind of hard i'm gonna be a hundred percent honest okay so you remember we talked about that 10 percent that you're gonna need to furnish the home that is going to include appliances because not all homes come fully stacked with appliances all right there are some appliances that are required at least in the state of texas and that's like your your stove for the most part dishwasher is usually going to be there 
um but everything else maybe not right so microwave might not be there it should be but it may not be so you don't have to spend money on a microwave um and then also the refrigerator is not required um so you're gonna have to spend money on the fridge and also a washer and dryer potentially you're gonna have to spend money on that as well now i didn't really want per se to spend money on a refrigerator i really didn't but the refrigerator that i wanted was the one with the screen um just because i felt i like to watch and listen to things while i'm cooking and and i thought it would be a good idea to have versus having a tv installed in the kitchen which we still plan on doing um but at the same time i did not want to spend over two thousand dollars almost three thousand dollars for this refrigerator it just wasn't worth it right so we ultimately decided to purchase it and here's the tip here's the hack a used refrigerator now the fridge that we purchased you guys will see it at some point in time in another vlog or a cooking video or something like that but it's a samsung i don't know the model number or anything but we did actually look at this refrigerator brand new and if i remember it was somewhere around 22 2300 on sale okay but we were able actually able to get this refrigerator for 600 dollars okay so we saved close to two grand, you know, once you add tax and delivery and all that, we saved close to two grand um, on a refrigerator because we were wise enough, okay, baby had to push me or whatever, but we were wise enough to get a used refrigerator if that's in excellent condition, um, legit nothing wrong with it. And it comes with a two year warranty, or is it one year? I don't remember, it's either one or two year warranty doesn't matter it's amazing okay so there's the hat so find you a place locally um that sells good great um quality used quality products and purchase that for a fraction of the price all right um refrigerators are just kind of necessary they're not like a beautiful chase lounge or a beautiful mirror I don't really want to spend money on appliances, but we have to have them. You feel what I'm saying? So just get it used. In addition to that, now this is where I really had the beef. Like I really was not feeling at all. We also got used wash and dryer. However, they do not match. Okay, and this is where my beef came in at. They don't. One is a uh, front loader, like the um, the what do you call that thing? The dryer is a front loader, and the washer is not they're not even one is samsung one is something else i don't know but they're hideous together like because they don't go together oh it is horrible but that's okay i'm gonna show y'all anyway one day because you know but it just it, it, it's not giving my laundry room the vibe that i wanted it to have but i digress oh where's my watch Damn it, my watch has been charging since yesterday. Hold on. Oh, no. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, God. Wait a minute. See, that's not good because you don't want to overcharge your stuff. <sighs> anyway, I know it was real random, but I just so happened to see in the viewfinder how naked my wrist was. I'm like, hold up. What's... Anyway, <clears throat> so the wash and dry do not match. Um, <laughs> I call them a Lucy and Ethel, okay? What's that? Uh, that was her name. Lucy from, you know, the Lucy show? Lucy? I love Lucy. It was Ethel, right? It was a friend. Like, they... Like, they didn't really... They seemed to be from two different worlds, but they worked well together. You know what I'm saying? They got along. And that's why I call it Lucy or anyway. Uh, Lucy and Ethel... Um, but they work extremely well. The washing machine is very nice. It doesn't have the agitator on the inside. It is Samsung. Uh, and you can put a lot of clothes in that bad boy. And the dryer is hideous as that dryer is. It works as well. It gets really hot. Like, listen, 
we don't have no problem. So washer dryer, I think it costs us five hundred dollars for the washer and the dryer. When we were looking at like base level washer and dryers, that was still gonna cost us close to fourteen hundred dollars. So fourteen hundred, five hundred. They're not cute, but they work, okay? So those are the tips that I will give you all from from this point okay starting out um be very very wise okay be very wise make sure that you're saving up your money yes getting your credit together and your debt um really really low is very important but you're going to need money out of the gate you just are i don't care what program you are part. there is no house that you can get into for zero dollars you're gonna to have to pay something it may be minimal but you are going to have to pay something and we didn't even talk about closing costs okay closing costs you're going to need as well and those are going to range um so i'm not even really going to get fully into that because the seller can assist you with closing costs uh, which will help to reduce the amount that you have to pay out of pocket. Um, but I would say on average 3%. Okay, that's not what we pay. Um, but on average, it's about 3%. So again, $200,000 home, you're going to pay somewhere around 6000 in closing costs. All right. Um, yeah, so you're going to need money out of the gate do not try to decorate within 30 days have your money saved up for your your home furniture home furnishings buy used appliances if you need to buy appliances don't go to best buy home depot and try to get the most the latest and the greatest um and go go into debt doing so okay it's just not smart and frankly a lot of these appliances nowadays are just not holding up anyway so I don't want this video to be too long and plus my camera is about to shut off. So um, I hope that these tips helped you. If you guys have any questions um, that you want me to address in part two of this video, put them down in the comment section um, and I will be more than happy to do that for you all. Make sure that you come back, subscribe first of all, turn on the notification bell and be on the lookout for when we drop and launch on Patreon. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.